Ukraine. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> good morning, everyone. Welcome to the light and love that is Unity of Lawrence here on this last Sunday in May. Beautiful Sunday here in Lawrence. The sun is shining. And maybe, I don't know, but maybe we'll get by today without being rained on. I'm not sure what the forecast is, but we've had a lot of water lately. Not that we don't like it because it's good for us, but sometimes we can get too much. Thank you again for coming. As you know, in Unity, we begin everything with prayer. Let's join prayer chaplain Karen as we will begin our service by opening to that divine presence we know is within each and every one of us. Good morning. Let's just take a couple of breaths, you know, just breathe in and release. And we breathe in and release and we close our eyes to the outer concerns as we center into that heart space to that space of love that we know is the core of our being that's that love that is the spark of the light that shines within us and shines through our eyes through our actions through our very souls we know this love deeply and intimately and together we share it and we grow it and we transform it and we transform our world by being together connected in loving space. Ah, we are grateful, so grateful and we vibrate with joy and harmony and peace. Yes, we breathe that in and we let go. We breathe in and we let go. We are knowing the love that we are. And so it is. Amen. And so it is. Please join Holly in singing Gratitude by Karen Drucker. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Unity of Lawrence. Today we're going to celebrate our gratitude. Yay. Gratitude before me. Gratitude behind me. Gratitude to the left of me. Gratitude to the right of me. Gratitude above me. Gratitude below me. Gratitude within me, gratitude all around me. I'm so grateful. 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 Gratitude before me, gratitude behind me, gratitude to the left of me, gratitude to the right of me, gratitude above me, gratitude below me, gratitude within me, gratitude all around me, and I'm so grateful, I'm so grateful. 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 Gratitude before me. Gratitude behind me. Gratitude to the left of me. Gratitude to the right of me, gratitude above me, gratitude below me, gratitude within me, gratitude all around me, and I'm so grateful, I'm so grateful, I'm so grateful, I'm so grateful, I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. I'm 
so grateful. I'm so grateful. Thank you. Thank you, Holly, very much. Now it's the time for us to declare our unity intentions. Please affirm with me unity's founding principle. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, God, the source of all good. And now unity's of Lawrence vision. United in divine love and joy, we celebrate a peaceful and abundant world for all. And finally, our UOL mission. We are a thriving spiritual community, sharing love, building bridges, and inspiring transformation. Yay. I'm so happy to have Kelly here. We're always excited when you're here. Kelly Hunt is a singer, songwriter, recording artist, speaker, and workshop facilitator based in Lawrence, Kansas. She is currently at work on her seventh album and in an additional album featuring songs she's written and performed for New Thought Churches throughout the United States, both expected to be released in 2021. Welcome, Kelly. Hi, everybody. Thank you. It's a joy to be here this morning on this beautiful Memorial Day weekend. As always, I'm going to start with a song. Oh, beautiful skies for amber waves of grain for purple mountain majesty Above the fruited plains, oh, 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 America, oh, America, God shed his grace on thee crown thy good sister and
May God thy gold refine Till all success Good morning. This morning I'll be talking about the lasting legacy of the men and women who died sacrificing their lives while serving for America, for these United States of America, and the legacy of their deep commitment, their courage, and their service. Arthur Ashe says, true heroism is remarkably sober, very undramatic. It is not the urge to surpass all others at whatever cost, but the urge to serve others at whatever cost. And I think the folks in the, who serve in the armed forces historically have done just that. Many have had the urge to serve their country. Many have had the urge to serve others, knowing full well what the cost might be as they did so. Did you know that each year on Memorial Day, there is a national moment of remembrance that takes place at 3 p.m. local time? That's something I didn't know. So today at 3 p.m., we have a moment of remembrance for those who made the ultra ultimate sacrifice for us. In a moment of meditation, a moment of prayer, or just remembering the people that we love who have gone on before, before us who have done that very thing. When I visited the National uh, Cathedral in Washington, D.C. a few years ago, uh, which is also known as a house of prayer for all people, all religions, all creeds, all walks of life. They do a daily moment of silence and prayer. So if you are in the cathedral taking a tour or visiting their library or just sitting in the pews and looking at the beautiful, amazing stained glass windows, and you will hear, uh, you will hear a tone that comes over the speaker system and they will say, we now pause for, I believe it's 60 seconds, a moment of silence. And that was a little, a little bit startling when that happened, but I'll tell you what was so dear and sweet about that. Everything in the cathedral stopped. Everyone stopped where they were. No matter what they were doing, whether they worked there or they were visiting there, and there are a lot of visitors that I believe they're going to start letting in again. I'm not sure when that'll happen. But just to have that moment, 
Many of us in unity know that meditation and prayer is a very powerful, personal thing. We don't dictate to each other how we should do it. Um, we don't say it has to be this way or that way. You have to believe this. We, we find that path for ourselves, which I find is a very endearing quality to unity, which is one of the reasons I'm, I'm part of that. And at the National Cathedral in Washington, uh, it was a very similar feeling. People from all countries that were there, all walks of life, stopped and had that moment of remembering whatever they needed to remember and whoever they needed to remember. They also have a little section as you if, if, as you walk in the front doors. It's a stunning view. If you've never been there, you can visit it online. It's beautiful and uh, the windows are amazing. The whole place is unbelievable. They say that the center aisle that goes down the cathedral is so long that you could take the national Washington National Monument, Monument and lay it down and it would fit in there. That's how how large it is. But as you walk into the left, there's a there's a private little alcove there. And they have a, a little platform with candles. You can go in and light a candle. There's a little place for reflection, silent reflection, which I thought was very dear. And another thing they do there that applies to what we're talking about today is in their library. There is a place where you can register someone who is currently in the service or was in the uh, service for the United States, no matter what year, no matter what, what arm of the service they were. And you can register there, there and they, uh, they get a certificate sent to them or to their family that says, you are now in our registry and daily for every day that we have the silent moment of refre reflection and prayer, this person is being prayed for, this family is being prayed for. Isn't that a cool thing? I think that's really a wonderful thing. And so while I was there visiting, I registered my brother-in-law who was currently serving his fourth tour of Iraq. We were very worried about him. And I registered my dad, who served in the Navy, because I thought, you know, he wasn't a career Navy man, but those few years meant a lot to him, and the people and the men that were involved in that with him meant a lot to him as well, some that he was still in touch with. And so, I put him on the registry and I got a certificate and I had it framed. I gave it to him for Christmas. And my dad's not a super demonstrative guy. He's a loving father. Um, but it was a moving moment for him just to think, gosh, somebody thought about me in that way. So today at three o'clock, if you have a few seconds, you might have that moment for someone that you care about and love. There's a woman named Mary Gaucher. She's a wonderful songwriter. She just had a book released. And she has quite a personal story to tell. But what I'm here to tell you about is she decided to collaborate with a group called Songwriting with Soldiers. And this is back just a few years ago, not that long ago. And she tells the story in her book about what that process was like for her. It was very moving. And this is a no-nonsense kind of gal. This is a world-class songwriter. Um, she is well known uh, for her writing um, throughout many parts of the world. But when she sat down with these soldiers, some who were currently, they had just gotten out of the service, who were very young, the young guys and, and gals, and some who had served in Vietnam, some before that, although not many because a lot of that generation is, is leaving us now. What she said she did mostly was listen. She sat and listened to their stories. These are people who had agreed to be part of this project. But here's what happened. As she began to collaborate and mostly listen, many, many songs started to surface. And she found that many of these soldiers 
had never told some of the stories that they told to her. In fact, many of them felt like they couldn't or shouldn't tell these stories and bring them to light. But just to have her there to listen, and they knew full well that they were going to be collaborating on songs, an amazing thing happened. Within a short amount of time of her working with these soldiers, and she has continued to do this, she, she came up with 11 songs, all inspired from these men and women who began to tell their stories. And it was a deep and emotional uh, excavation for the soldiers, and it was very moving for her. And many times they cried together, many times they laughed together. There were funny stories as well. But there was one soldier in particular, and he began to tell his story. And as he was talking, this phrase came out. He said, you know, the thing that got me through was my rifle and my rosary beads. And she took that rifle and rosary beads and many of the words that he had spoken directly to her and she wrote a song and that became the title of her album that was released rifles and rosary beads and these songs are incredible t telling these veterans stories so i'm telling you this just to say that there are many folks who have served our country who are not able to tell their stories, who don't want to tell their stories. But there are some, if they're given the opportunity, just to have somebody to ask them about it and listen. Just listen. You never know what's going to come out and what growth and healing can happen from that. I'm a big proponent of music as a healer. It's been so for me, and I've seen it so for others in many different ways, not just with music therapy, but just having something that can lower your blood pressure or help you get uplifted during a time of grief and sorrow. There's a lot of issues of closure that many of these veterans haven't had. For example, there was a, a father, a Hawaiian father, who had two sons in the service. And one of those sons uh, didn't make it, and he was killed in battle. He was a lieutenant. And there was going to be a memorial service held for those soldiers and also to honor the nurses who took care of those soldiers. Some were from Hawaii, some were from other places. And one of the things that this father had trouble with over the years was he couldn't be with his son when his son passed. He couldn't be there in person. Of course he couldn't. So he had a button made that he wore that had his son's face on it. And he went to this ceremony and he thought, I want to honor these nurses who took care of the soldiers just to tell them thank you if nothing else so he got a beautiful flower lay being from hawaii and the first nurse that walked into the area he he motioned for her to come over and he asked if he could put the lay around her neck and she leaned down and she said sure and he put the lay and she saw the button with the face and she said i know that I know that soldier. And the father thought, well, that's a nice sentiment. And he said, well, how, that's my son. How, how could you know him? She said, I was there taking care of him. And there's something that has been bothering me about that, about your son all these years. I just... It bothers me so much. And he said, well, what is that? And she said, I was there to prepare his body for viewing after he died in battle. And 
I couldn't get his eyes to close all the way. They would close and they would just open a little bit. And she said, that's always bothered me. And he started to laugh and light up. And she said, oh my gosh, why are you laughing? He said, my son, even when he was little, he would sleep with his eyes partially open. We never knew why, but that's just how it was for him. And when he was a lieutenant in the army and, and his guys at night would think he was asleep and they'd be gambling and drinking and stuff, he'd roll over and they would see his eyes were partially open and they would stop what they were doing and, and lie down in their cots and go to sleep. What they didn't know was he was sound asleep. And she said, oh my gosh. And she started to laugh, and his fa and the father said, you know what, that's how I know you were with my son. He felt this wash of relief and closure, and she did too. She said, oh, all these years, I thought I had done something wrong. I thought I had not served your son well, and now I know he was himself to the very, very end. And so they shared. They shared a moment of laughter, which I just think is so cool because there was a reason that father was there at that ceremony. There was a reason that particular nurse was the first one in. There was a reason he put the lay over her neck and she bent down and she saw that beautiful face. It was no mistake. I believe, and we say this in unity a lot, it was divine order, divine order. So many of us have seen over the years, especially the older generations, um, the people who wear a poppy or a, a, a poppy made out of paper. I know my mother um, for many years and her mother would hand those out on Memorial Day. So the poppy is a symbol of war casualties started with a poem. In the spring of 1915, a Canadian artillery unit brigade surgeon named Lieutenant Colonel John McRae saw bright red poppies blooming on the war-torn fields where so many soldiers had lost their lives. And he was moved to write the poem in Flanders Fields. And I'm going to read that poem to you right now. In Flanders Fields by John McRae. In Flanders fields, the poppies blow between the crosses, row on row, that mark our place. And in the sky, the larks, still bravely singing, fly scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead. Short days ago, we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved, and were loved. And now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe. To you from failing hands we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders fields. So let's remember those people who gave that ultimate sacrifice. No matter what our beliefs are, about the wars they fought in. Here are some things to remember. Let's remember their courage. Let's remember their deep commitment. Let's remember their service and take it on ourselves. I don't mean join the armed forces. I mean, how can we carry their legacy forward in our own lives for ourselves and each other? So here's some things to try this week. Say their names, whoever they may be, silently to others. Recall the families who are missing their loved ones. Ask to hear their stories. Reach out to someone and offer help. And many times, it's best to do it privately and silently. But it helps us to remember. Douglas MacArthur said, the soldier above all others prays for peace, for it is the soldier who must suffer the deepest wounds and scars of war. They pray.
pray for peace. May we do so as well. And so I'm going to end today before we go into meditation with a song that's written from the point of view of a person who has passed, who is saying, it's all right. I'm okay. I want to reach you. I want you to hear me. Though it may be hard to understand, there was never one moment when love wasn't with me, holding me gently in the palm of its hand. And there is no place that God isn't. There is no heart untouched by love. There is always a light that is present, and there is only and forever love. Forever love. I want to thank you. I want you to hear me. Though it may be hard to understand, there is never one moment when love isn't with you, lifting you up in the palm of its hand. No place God isn't and there is no heart untouched by love. There is always light that is present and there is only You cannot fail. No, you did not fail. There's no place where God isn't. There is no heart untouched by love, and there is always light present. There is only and forever love. And I want to thank you. I want you to hear me. So let's take a deep breath in. As we remember, there is no place that God isn't. Right here in this room with us at this moment, wherever you are, God is. And we breathe again. being surrounded by that golden circle of impenetrable love and protection. And we breathe in. And 
we send that love and protection out to our world. And today in particular, we send it to those who have served our country. And we say thank you. And we know there was never one moment with them. And we say thank you. that they are being held gently in the palm of love's hand. As are we. And we say thank you. And we breathe and as we slowly come back to the room or wherever we are at this very moment, And slowly, gradually, open our eyes. We know there is no place that God is in. There is no heart untouched by There is always a light that is present. There is only and forever So it is. Thank you. Thank you, Kelly. Very moving. Thank you. <laughs> and now it's time to give thanks and offering. I invite you to join me as we hold our gifts to this community in our hands and love in our hearts. Let's affirm together, divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And so it is. Please go online to give via PayPal or write a check and mail it in to support the Unity of Lawrence ministry. Thank you. Now let's join Holly in singing Love Can Move the World by Michael Gott. Sea. 
Love can cause the wars to cease. Love can move this world to peace. It's a tide that begins with you and me. Love can move the world as the warmth of the sun moves the tree. Feel the wind of love increase as we move this world to peace. Come love the world with me. Come love the world with me. Come love the world with me. Oh, I'm so grateful that love is always there. That love is within me and love is without me. And I can increase the love in this world with my gratitude and the peace in my heart and the light that shines from my eyes. I am so grateful for the freedoms that we have because of the sacrifice of so many. We have the freedom to worship the power that we understand. We have the freedom to speak our opinions, our thoughts, our hopes, our dreams. Mm -hmm. We have the freedom from fear. And so we are grateful. We are grateful as a community, not only for our community, but for this beautiful country that we live in. And we give thanks that we can offer to our community, our blessings, our gifts, our talents, our time, our treasure, because this community supports us and we can go into the world and be a light, a light of love, a light of peace. And so it is. Amen. Hear my This land is your land, this land is my land, from California to the New York Islands, from the Redwood Forest, well, to the Gulf Stream of Waters, I said this land was made for you and me. I was walking that ribbon of highway. Yeah, I saw above me that endless skyway. Oh, and I saw below.
Thank you, Kelly. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you, Kelly. I really enjoyed that song. I really had a great time. Thank you so much. It's time for announcements. Interested in upping your spiritual game? Ever wonder about the power of prayer? Searching for a way to help others in a deep and personal way? Consider joining us for prayer chaplain training. The decision to become an active prayer chaplain at Unity of Lawrence can be made after you attend the training. Reverend Edna Mosier will be the trainer and we will learn from the original man manual created by Reverend Leilani. If interested, please contact Kathy at the office and we will make plans for this event. Office email is info at unityoflawrence.org or call 785-841-1447. Join us next week as Janice Stanfield brings us both the special music and the message, What is Mine to Do? Now it's that wonderful time we, we get to bless our youth and each other. So let's rub our hands together and say with me, we love you, we bless you, we appreciate you, and we behold the divinity in you. Now let's sing the original peace song with Holly and Bradford. Now let's pray the prayer of protection. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. Thank you for joining us. Please join us in a moment. We'll all get together and have a nice, lovely visit. If you can stay on the line, look forward to seeing you. Thanks for coming.